Stacey Canfield is a state senator in Tennessee. He's got an interesting new idea. Let's tie uh, welfare benefits to students' performance in school. He's going to go on Fox News Channel and explain. Listen, we're not talking, I'm, I'm not expecting these kids to write the Magna Carta. You know, ABCs, one, two, threes. I think any parent can just about do that. We have just about everything you'd ever ask for, except for parents that are engaged and involved. And if a parent doesn't care if a child shows up to school or if they show up, they don't care if they, you know, are asleep during the school day, as long as they're getting their check. I mean, we have to motivate these parents. The only way to break the generational cycle of poverty is education. So uh, I actually think, although it has a lot of uh, issues, that there's some validity to this argument. JR and Anna are, are, are going to disabuse me of that in a minute. But let me give you more uh, from uh, Stacey Canfield on Fox. The thing is, we have a lot of parents who couldn't give a flip. We can't get them on the phone. They don't show up to any parent-teacher meetings. We have to find some way to motivate those parents to say, wait a second, maybe it's important if I talk to the teacher once, more, once a year at least. So, you know, if you want to talk motivation, nothing motivates like cash. And when somebody says, wait a second, my kid's failing, maybe there's a problem because I'm not getting as big a check as I was getting. Now, uh, the part that I think has validity is that I think that parents are not as involved in education as they should be. We do have to motivate them somehow. This obviously is a fairly inexact way of doing it, and it has downsides that we're going to explain in a second. But he is also right, in my opinion, that the cash is a large motivator. Again, there is downsides. All right, now, uh, Anna, JR, go ahead, jump down my throat for even entertaining this idea. Well, first of all, you're making the mistake of thinking that he actually gives a damn about parents mm -hmm. getting involved in their students' education. That's not what this is about. It's you about think so? pushing it's about pushing the stereotype that wel welfare recipients are these losers who don't care about anything other than living off the government dime, right? And, and that's obviously not true. Of course, there are certain individuals that will take advantage, but people aren't proud to take welfare. It's not like they're bragging about it and it's something that they want to do. I mean, we talk about income inequality in this country on a regular basis. So people need, you know, government assistance because they're not getting paid a fair wage, like places at Walmart or whatever. But another point to p talk about is the fact that a lot of times, these are the individuals that are defunding education. So teachers are overworked and underpaid. Programs are getting cut. These students aren't being given the resources to succeed in school. So then he's going to turn around and say, you're going to lose your uh, government assistance if your student doesn't excel in school. Now, look, I agree with your second point. They don't have a leg to stand on, the Republicans, because they're the ones that want to cut education in the first place. I know that they want to shift blame, et cetera. But it doesn't address the point that the parents are not as involved as they should be. And I think that oftentimes that's the number one problem. Okay. So he, has a, he might have a bad intent. And look, I, look, if he really cared, how about uh, the bankers who apparently can't do math? Oops, golly gee, we lost hundreds of billions of dollars. But nonetheless, we don't take their money away. In fact, we give them money. So on the hypocrisy, Anna, I'm 100% with you. But I think that we do need to address parents somehow it might be a bad way of doing it, but you got to do. I think you have to take some action. Yeah, I guess the the uh, the alternative isn't to leave it alone and do nothing, but this is going about it completely the wrong way. I mean, first of all, what's the stereotype about welfare recipients? They have seven kids. What, uh, I'm, I'm just going to start shooting holes in the general idea of the bill. Maybe this is unfair. What if three kids are doing well and four aren't? Then what do you do about the family's money? Uh, what if this, the 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 environment that they're in? First off, single parents. Uh, they probably work four jobs, at least two. So when well, I, I mean, we can assume it's it's putting a blanket statement over all these people and degrading them as lazy, sitting at home watching TV, and not caring if their kids are not getting up and going to class. You don't know why that kid isn't going to class. If the kid gets there at eleven o'clock every day, they just go. We should send you to talk to. Oh, we don't have any school counselors because we cut that. But go talk to a school counselor to see what's going on in their world, in their life, to see why they're coming in so late. Maybe they're helping out at home because there's not enough money, which is why they're on welfare. And then you go straight to blaming them as if they're out to just screw this whole thing over. Yes, parents' involvement is very important. We all know this. It's not the golden ticket. There's a okay. lot of factors that go into this. All right, so that's interesting. Now, look, I, again, I take your points, uh, and I think they're good ones. Uh, you know, and what if I switched it around on you, though, and said, hey, you know what? 
I'm not going to stigmatize people on welfare. That's not right. And they probably working. A lot of them are working super hard and just not having enough money. And by the way, of course, some people on welfare aren't working super hard. Everybody gets that, right? So it's a mix of things, right? But what if I said, okay, I will. If your kids do uh, badly in school, I will charge you more taxes, so that it applies to everybody. Jake, if you want to find a different way to hold parents accountable if they're not uh, participating in you know, their students' education, then that's fine. Connecting it to welfare, doing these fines and penalties and taxes doesn't make sense. First of all, you've got to solve the problem of income inequality in the country because right now people are but working... But then we're never going to do anything. I mean, you're not okay, going to solve so, that so problem Okay, so we're not going to do anything. So let's add insult to injury and penalize these uh, parents when they're just trying to put food on the table. They can't make ends meet. And, oh, it's turns out that their kids not doing well in school. Let, let's find a way to screw and, them and over too. Let's not glorify people too much, okay? Some definitely fit that description, and some definitely fit the description of the stereotype, where they do sit on their ass. And by the way, you know, these guys all assume, oh yeah, <laughs> they're Democratic voters. No, a lot of rural Republican voters, totally on welfare, and, so, and are their kids doing great in school? They're not doing that great either, okay? So, look, it, in the end, Will I, would I vote for this guy's bill? No. Your points on it are very good, uh, and, and I think it does unfairly stigmatize welfare recipients, etc. But we got to shake uh, parents out of their complacency. Oh, it's the teachers. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. Well, a lot of times, I got news for you. It's the parents.